This video looks at boat diagrams for quadratic factors and resonance. So in general, we've been looking at issues such as what is frequency response, why is it useful, how do I compute it efficiently, and how do I represent it. Now this video is going to look at the first three bullet points all together in relation to quadratic factors which have complex roots. And that's the key thing, we're looking at quadratic factors with complex roots. So here's an example. You'll see we've got g equals 4 over s squared plus s plus 2 and that's got an underdamped denominator. You'll see the damping ratio 1 over 2 root 2, natural frequency root 2. Now because this g of s does not have simple real poles, the sketching methods that we used in the earlier videos cannot be used. So what we're going to do is quickly revisit the first principles to see how we would do the Bode diagram. So first of all, we've substituted in s equal j omega, there it is, to find out what g of j omega looks like. And then we've rearranged it, so you'll see we've got an imaginary part here and a real part here. Having done that, by inspection, we can write down what the gain is. You'll see we've got the imaginary part squared plus the real part squared and then all under a square root. Not a particularly nice looking function as it happens. And if we look at the phase, similarly, you'll see we've got minus 10 to the minus 1 of omega over 2 minus omega squared, the minus being because the complex number is in the denominator. So we can write expressions. That's the key thing of this page. If we have a quadratic factor, we can write expressions for the gain and the phase, but they may not be particularly insightful. So what do we do next? We say, OK, let's go and have a look at asymptotic information and see if we can at least say what happens asymptotically. So again, we've just rewritten what the gain and the phase are. There's the two expressions. And we're saying, first of all, let omega tend to 0. So if omega tends to 0, clearly in this case, the modulus of g tends to 2, which is 6 decibels, and the phase of g tends to 0. So that asymptote is straightforward. Next, what happens as omega goes to infinity? Well, here again, clearly the gain goes to zero and with a slope of minus 40 decibels per decade because we know we've got this s squared in the denominator and that will dominate for large frequencies. <coughs> Similarly, it's fairly clear that as omega goes to infinity, the phase goes to minus 180. So we have indeed got clear asymptotic information. What happens, therefore, in the mid frequency range and that is not quite so clear cut. Okay, What we can show for this example is that in the low frequency range the gain actually increases with frequency rather than decreases. So even though there's no zero factor, there's just two poles, the gain goes up. Now I'm not going to prove it here, you can prove it yourself or look in the textbooks if you need to, but you'll find that the maximum for the gain is quite near to the natural frequency. In fact, it will be a little bit lower than the natural frequency. And there are explicit formula, we'll show them in a few slides time. So if I put in the natural frequency, there it is, root 2, and calculate the gain, you'll see I get 4 over root 2, or 9 decibels. And you'll remember that at low frequency, in case you've forgotten, the gain was 2 or 6 decibels. So the gain has gone up and that's perhaps surprising. Okay, and the maximum, uh, we're close to the maximum for low damping. So what we're saying, if you put in the natural frequency, then you will find that this 9 decibels is pretty close to the peak. It's not exact, but it's pretty close. What about the phase then? Now, we've got the phase statement here. Unsurprisingly, if I put in the natural frequency root 2 and I substitute that into the phase, what do I get? I get 90 degrees. But what's more significant, and you won't see just by looking at this formula, is when you do the phase plot, the change from 0 to minus 180 degrees, which obviously occurs around the natural frequency, is much more rapid than it would be if you had two real roots. And again, we will demonstrate that in a moment. So here you can see the plot. We've got a normal overdamped system, 4 
over s squared plus 3s plus 2 and the corresponding bow diagrams are this green one here and this green one here. So what do you notice? The gain is always reducing as you expect so gain going down for all omega and similarly you look at the phase and the phase going down for all omega. Now what happens when we move to this underdamped variant, you'll see all I've done is change the coefficient for the s. So I've got the same s squared, the same plus 2, and the same 4, but I've changed the coefficient for the s to make this slightly underdamped. If you look at the gain plot, what do you see? There is a peak in the gain. The gain initially goes up, and the peak up here is not that far from the characteristic frequency of root 2. You can see it's slightly to the left but not a lot, just slightly to the left. The other thing you notice if you look down in the phase plot is the transition from 0 degrees down to minus 180 degrees is much faster, much more rapid. You stay close to 0 degrees longer and then we go down, you'll see here, quite rapidly before getting to minus 180 degrees. So clearly this underdamped system has got a different shape to the Bode diagram to all the examples we've had with real poles. Now let's look at this a bit more generally. You'll see here I've given a typical um, normalized form, g equals 10, we don't need to worry about that, over s squared plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n squared. And I'm going to use omega n equals 4 to produce a plot, but you can use whatever omega n you like. And what I'll do is produce the bow plots for different values of zeta to see if there's any pattern, anything I can notice and use. So here are the plots. So if we start at the bottom, if zeta equals 1, which means I'm not underdamped at all, you'll see I've got this plot here, this purple plot, and this phase plot here. So there's no peak in the gain, the phase changes smoothly and slowly, and the gain is always monotonically decreasing. Next, I'm going to reduce the damping to 0.75, and you'll see the gain now stays up a bit longer before it goes down. We've got the same asymptotes here and here, as you would expect, but you'll see the gain is slightly larger around the natural frequency. If you look at the phase plot, here it is, you can see it stays near zero a little bit longer and goes down slightly faster than the previous plot. Okay, so there it is over here. Okay, so the phase stays up a bit longer, changes slightly faster. Next, let's take the damping down to 0.375 and what do you notice now? That's this plot here. You see now we've got a peak in the gain. The gain has actually gone up for low frequencies. Now in this particular case, the natural frequency was 4. So I'll mark that there. There was the natural frequency, 4. <coughs> and what do you notice? This peak in the gain is not far away from the natural frequency of 4 which is what we've said, and if we look at the phase, again you see it stays near zero a lot longer and then shoots down quite a lot more quickly than the overdamped cases. Next, let's reduce damping even further, down to 0.25, and you see the peak has got higher, and in fact has moved slightly to the right, nearer to the natural frequency, and again, you'll see the phase is going down even faster. And finally, if we take the damping down to 0.125, you see we've got a very noticeable peak now. This almost over the natural frequency and a very fast transition of phase from 0 to minus 180 degrees. So what do we notice? The peak gets larger as the damping gets lower and the transition in phase gets faster as the damping gets lower. So here's an interim summary. Quadratic factors with complex poles require bow diagrams which are less amenable to simple sketching rules than real poles. You'll see, while there's a pattern, if I asked you to come up with some simplified sketching rules, you'd say, well, they're actually quite complex. And the key point to note is that for low damping, there will be a peak in the gain and the phase transition from 0 to minus 80 degrees will be fast. Now if you happen to know, want to know what the peak in the gain is, you'll find the frequency where it occurs is given by this formula here. I'm not going to prove that. It's easy calculus. So the frequency where the peak occurs is omega n, the natural frequency, times the square root of 1 minus 2 zeta squared.
and this only applies if zeta squared is less than a half. If zeta squared is greater than a half, there is no peak. And the actual size of the peak, so if I substitute in that frequency, is given by this formula here, 1 over 2 zeta root 1 minus zeta squared. So now we move on to resonance. What is resonance? In simple terms, it's when a system has a large gain in a very small frequency range. And I should note here that the use of large and small are relative, not absolute. So what this means is that some frequencies are amplified disproportionately compared to those frequencies around them. So remember, frequency response, you're putting a sine wave into the system and you're getting ultimately a sine wave out. And what you're looking at is the relative amplitude of the output sine wave compared to the input sine wave. And what we're saying is for some frequencies, the output amplitude is quite large compared to other frequencies. And you will recognize in this bow plot by a sharp peak in the gain plot. Now in most systems, you really don't want resonance, so you're either going to design it out by changing your structure to make sure there's no resonance, or if you really can't avoid it, you're, you're going to try and avoid exciting the system with frequencies near the resonance, because if you excite a system near a resonant frequency, you'll get large amplitudes of oscillation, and that can cause a lot of fatigue. So generally speaking, not always, Okay, there are examples where you like resonance, but generally speaking, resonance is bad, something you want to avoid. And here's an archetypal resonance plot. You see, if you see a plot like this, the peak in the gain plot jumps out at you. Obviously, I've exaggerated this one. You can see the size of the peak. It's about 40 decibels bigger than the steady state, which means a multiplying factor of about 100. So that's quite significant. And you look at the phase transition, from 0 to minus 180, and you can see it is indeed very, very fast. So this is a system with almost no damping at all. But the most obvious point is the resonance peak jumps out at you. You look at this bow diagram and you can see it. Here's a different example. This one's got two peaks. They're not quite so severe. But this will be fairly common in structures, especially mechanical structures, which have many modes. Sometimes you'll have several resonant frequencies. In this case, case, one which is relatively large and one which is not quite so large. But again, the peaks jump out at you and you'll see the phase transitions fairly fast near those resonant frequencies. Now here's a warning. Here's a higher order system, not just a second order system. And you'll see I've put into the denominator a quadratic factor which has a very low damping. So you're expecting to see a resonant peak in the game plot. And you can't see it. It's not there. And you say, this is a bit odd. I seem to have a resonant factor, a very underdamped factor. Where's my resonant peak? Well, the bottom line is that the other two poles have swamped the impact of the resonance. So while the game plot has this little flat area here, there actually isn't a resonant peak. Okay? So despite significant underdamping, there's no resonant peak because it's been swamped out by the other poles. And that can happen in some cases, but obviously not always. So does a quadratic factor or, or a very underdamped quadratic factor imply resonance? And of course the answer is no. You have to look at the whole picture, and sometimes you'll have significant underdamping, but no resonance. So, conclusions. We've illustrated bow diagrams of simple systems with underdamped modes. We've shown that significant underdamping can lead to peaks in the gain near the natural frequency, and this is denoted as resonance. Sketching is less straightforward than with simple factors, and it's important that readers recognize the dangers of peaks in the game plot. So if you have a peak in the game plot, if you have a resonance, then you're a bit concerned because it means if you excite the system in frequencies near that peak, you can get a lot of oscillation and a lot of fatigue. In many systems, an underdamped mode may not lead to resonance due to the mitigating factors, uh, mitigating factors of other factors, or mitigating effects, perhaps.